and surgery, even in the stone ages, whatever was planned, all the plan is done beforehand. And then the tools were just the tools to transfer that information from that plan into the operating room. And traditionally it was splints and wiring the mouth shut and then bending the plates. The splints and wiring the mouth shut was that transfer of information, albeit there's a lot of margin of error or levels of error in that transfer. With the custom, it's direct to the bone. The plate is giving us that information to know that we get exactly what we want. So it's much more predictable, right. stable, and efficient. So people, um, you know, we're proud of the surgery times we have. You know, it used to take me eight hours to do an operation. Now it's taking one hour on average to do a double jaw surgery. Yeah. Eight times, 800 times, 800% faster. Right. right. It's not, I'm not talking about 10% faster, 20% faster. Right. We're doing it. 800 times faster, 500 to 800 times faster than experienced surgeons, Yep. you know, professors, attendings, legends. And it's because the technology allows us to do that. Now, the good thing about that is there's so much uh, in terms of recovery, invasiveness um, and health benefits, you know, less bleeding time, less stretching, less trauma, less fatigue. Um, less anesthesia time, and then things that you no have. No catheter. No catheter, no nasogastric tube that's left in. There's a lot of invasive things that we just chalk up as normal for a long procedure that we don't have to do mm -hmm. now. So it's not, a, it's not a race. It's not like we can do this faster as a bragging right. It's that technology allows us to skip steps like wiring, unwiring, measuring, bending, and do the operation quicker and also more efficient yeah. um, to get these better things. So on that point, I, um, so Brian Hockle, who's a, he's a well-known airway dentist who just underwent an MMA a year ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I, he just posted his post-surgical result results. He had a nice big advancement. I think yep. it was with, uh, Dr. Reza Movahead and I commented, Hey, nice looking advancement. Good yep. for you. Um, and then I said, and by the way, uh, you know, I can appreciate that because I just witnessed Dr. Alfie do three MMAs on Monday. Right. I'm here in Houston hanging out with Dr. Alfie, shadowing him, learning about his surgical technique. I watched him do three MMAs on Monday. And he said, his, he responded on Facebook, three on Monday. And I said, yeah, the custom plates allows him to do this surgery much quicker. Uh, in the operatory next door, the gentleman had completed one surgery in the time that Dr. Alfie did three triples. Right. It's double jaw plus genio. Right. And then he said, oh, uh, mm, I'd rather my surgeon not rush. I want my surgeon to take my time. Right. This is a common response you get when you yeah. share your For workflow sure. with people or you're, at least tell them that you're doing three surgeries a day instead of one. Right. How would you respond to that? Are you yeah. rushing? Is it actually a, a bad thing? Yeah you're doing this surgery much faster and, and have a lot more volume. Right. So for the, my response is for, first of all, it's something that I completely understand the, the criticism and, and uh, disbelief because you're talking about legends in the field have been doing this their entire careers. And I can do the operation, like we said, five to eight times faster. Um, it sounds crazy. It's right. unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's hard to believe. So I don't take that for granted that these criticisms criticisms come from a reality where it's just hard to believe that something can be done this way. Right. So when it's hard to believe, the default thought is going to be there's something wrong. Yeah. Right. Is it rushing? Now, the reality, you've been in the operation. You've seen four of them this week. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can you can attest that there's nothing being rushed at all. In fact, uh, it's very thorough and clean and I probably have more steps and, and products than most surgeons add to their procedure. Totally, actually. totally. It's actually more thorough. Um, so, And just to comment on that, yeah. in the operatory, every, it feels like everyone on the whole floor sort of hovers in and out and is just like, oh, it's Dr. Alfie. Wow, he's already on the lower. It's only been 30 minutes. Right. You know, and people come in and sort of, you know, almost in awe yeah. and because on the same floor, there's other surgeons working, doing traditional jaw surgery and they're, they're not coming in and saying, Oh, you know, this is sloppy or he's rushing. They're coming in in awe of this right. completely radically different process that 
is really it's a paradigm shift it's a paradigm shift. compared to what they're used to seeing exactly so yeah i understand and anyone that really knows orthognathic surgery surgeons know this well it's an impossible operation to rush actually because there's so many things that have to happen and happen right to get from a to b to c to d to z the final outcome uh -huh. so it, it's something that is impossible to make the right cuts the right fixation the right splits the right position to get the right bite at the end of the day it's impossible like if you rush an early part of the procedure you're just screwing yourself over for later basically because yeah. each part depends on the one Correct. before it so if you rush you'll be you'll be there for 10 hours because you won't get you, you won't get past a bad split or uh, a bad position of the upper jaw where now the lower jaw is off and then you got to troubleshoot it it's impossible to rush it's right. impossible right there's this idea that because you're doing you're doing two you to 200 cases this year. Right. That somehow that means that your surgeries are lower quality because you're doing volume. Right. But the thought that I had is that actually because your way of doing surgery allows you to do more surgeries. Correct. That that just means you're getting more experience. Yeah. And <laughs> refining yeah. I mean, the process. All I know is my own experience and comparing myself now compared to five years ago, it's a completely different experience. Because of the volume. Because of the volume. Every year, I'm better. Right. Every single year, I'm so, better because of the experience. But it's this counterintuitive thing it's where counterintuitive. actually volume means quality. Yeah. Because of the increased exactly. experience. Hundred percent. Hmm. Hundred percent. Hmm. Yeah. People don't really associate the shorter surgery times with better patient outcomes, but yep. that's also a huge part of it because, huge. like, um. You know, I watched you do several surgeries this week, and there is a certain amount of wrestling around with the tissue that occurs, especially when yep. you're, you know, getting toward Release. the back yep. on the upper and the lower. Things have to sort of get wrestled open and held open, and nerves get sort of pushed around a little bit as plates are fitted, et cetera, right. et cetera. And I can see how coming out of that, there's going to be some, some swelling, numbness, discomfort. some swelling, discomfort, right. pain, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, um, it's it's a tough process, but I can right. see that times seven. Correct. And I'm just like, holy crap! I yeah. get why yeah. people are wrapped in a bandage yeah. for extended it, period. That's exactly what it is. It's that times seven, yeah, or right. in this case, divided by seven. Right. And instead, with uh, the custom plates method of doing double jaw surgery, your mm -hmm. method of doing double jaw surgery, you're getting, and this is what you've been telling patients all week. One really tough week one right. week that sucks yeah that's what i like to say i said the first week sucks but after anticipate the first, it yeah after the first week you have people going back to school going back to work yeah. definitely after two weeks definitely yeah and you saw some recoveries at different time points and many of them will say i had zero pain or i had minimal pain or the pain ended after one week right and it wasn't as bad of a recovery as i expected i've heard some people say this week i had no pain i just had discomfort right yeah, but of course, uh, regardless of whether it's custom plates or traditional, there's still eight weeks no chewing. Correct. Eight weeks of soft, mushy foods. Yep. Um, there's no way around that. Yeah, not um, yet. Not yet. But, uh, you know, because another problem with jaw surgery is that people might want to do it, but how do you carve out six weeks out of your life? Not everyone can just take a sabbatical where they can yeah. sit in a room and recover from jaw surgery. Yeah, that's not what we want them to do, actually. I want people getting back to normal life as soon as possible. Yeah. And um, usually that's two weeks to get back into the work field, into the office. Even exercising, I encourage exercising at the end of one week. But the more active people are in back to normal life, I think it has a positive impact on healing. And now the realities of the operation, that's become a reality of the recoveries. Now the non-chew diet, yeah, um, thankfully nowadays, you know, I have a nutritionist in the office that um, has made a huge impact for our patients and she's, she'll sit with our patients that come up with a plan to make sure they're nourished and supplemented and they enjoy the process of becoming healthier as well and eating cleaner um, right. and, and get ideas for non-chew diet. And it's not a, some, there's confusion. A lot of people think it's going to be a pure liquid diet and that's not the case. It's just a non-chew diet. So I don't have rubber bands on the patients after they're not wired shut. They can open talk, put a spoon in their mouth. Um, but it could be anything. They fork beans and guacamole and queso and, and eat it as long as they're not chewing. So people get do okay. 